Welcome to the Beaver Dam Mountains, the southwest corner of the state of Utah, a place where the Basin and Range, a dominant geologic province in Western North America, really starts to take off. We're not too far from you know, Zion National Park and the Colorado Plateau near the town of St. George. But here is where the Basin and Range country really begins. And yet it's a bit of a transition zone where there's still some Colorado Plateau rocks, those sedimentary layered rocks that are popular in the Grand Canyon and in some of the other national parks here. And so some of that bleeds over, if you will, into this part of the state and into this little corner or edge of the Basin and Range. So what we're gonna do here is check out a really interesting and I suppose famous feature here together. Thanks for joining me folks. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here in the Beaver Dam Mountains. And we're gonna take a look at one of the more popular and I suppose more important geologic features in Western North America, and that's the Great Unconformity. The Great Unconformity, if you're not familiar with it, is a contact, a boundary between two rock units. Below that line or that contact are rocks that are basement rocks, old, Precambrian, metamorphic and igneous rocks that formed deep within the Earth's crust, miles or kilometers down. And sitting on top of those rocks across this contact or unconformity are rocks that were deposited on a coastline. In this location, these are sandstones from the Cambrian period. These rocks are around 530 or so million years old. So this contact between the two is about 1.3 billion years, about 25% of all of Earth's history. Now I've done videos before on the Great Unconformity, probably the most popular location and where it's just spectacularly exposed is down in the depths of the Grand Canyon. Above, I've also done videos of the Great Unconformity in Northern Utah, even into Wyoming. Here in southwestern Utah, it crops out as well. So we're going to take a look at the rocks on, other, on either side of this unconformity and see if we can actually place this unconformity here on the landscape. So let's go check this out together. All right, so you can see in front of me here in this landscape, in this desert environment, we have a couple of different rock types that show up here. We have these very pink colored rocks with crystals in them, uh, these quartz and feldspar rich rocks with a little bit of muscovite. These are pegmatites, basically granites, just very coarsely grained or large crystal sizes here in the granite. So we see these as well in this uh, area here, but we also see some of these darker rocks, these dark rocks here that are layered almost on end. And if we zoom in here, hopefully you can see some of the, um, the sparkly minerals in the rock. Let's see if we can actually get that in there. There we go. So these are micas. Uh, crystalline, in this crystalline rock here, this is a schist, a metamorphic schist. So the, the sparkly little minerals in there are micas that are all layered uh, parallel to one another and form this layered rock here known as schist. These are the Precambrian rocks here on one side, or in this case below the unconformity. So we've got great exposures here of these basement rocks. If you wanted to see uh, other outcrops of these rocks, you'd have to go again to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, at least regionally. Here though, there's been enough uplift in the basin and range that's actually brought these up to the surface. So you might be saying, okay, well, where's, where's the unconformity? You found the rocks below the unconformity, but where is the unconformity itself? Now in this type of environment and landscape, uh, you know, different than the Grand Canyon and it's just beautiful vertical exposures. You know, we're probably not going to see a sharp contact between the two, but I guess we, I guess we can figure out where they are, where this unconformity is, excuse me, by walking across this landscape and seeing when we change rock types from these metamorphic and igneous basement rocks into the more layered sedimentary rocks that are, that are common on the other side of the Great Unconformity. As we look over here to this hillside, you might be seeing a little bit of a color change in the rocks, more of a, a brown, and there's also some layering that crops out there as well. So we're gonna take a walk across 
this area here and see if we can find the great unconformity on this landscape and see where that contact actually is. So we'll just kind of keep the camera running, I think, as we traipse across this spot. We still have the basement rocks here at our feet, the metamorphic and igneous rocks. It's mainly these dark colored metamorphics, but they're interspersed with some of these lighter colored igneous rocks. Now, as we drop into the wash, we're probably gonna lose a lot of the outcrops themselves because it's covered by this thin layer of sediment from the various flooding events that have come down through this wash. As we look up higher along the ridge line, we can see some gray, lighter colored rocks there up along the ridge line. Those look like they're carbonates, limestones, and maybe dolostones. And sure enough, as we're looking here in the wash, I'm starting to see a lot more loose rocks that match that kind of description. Limestones, dolostones, and such. So we get a little bit closer here, we can see the rocks here are more of a brown or tan color. So that's looking pretty promising. Of course, it helps that I've actually seen the Great Unconformity in the Grand Canyon. I'm familiar with the units down there, the unit above the basement rocks in the Grand Canyon, and it should be the same here, is known as the Tapitz Sandstone. This is a Cambrian age unit, again, about 530 or 40 million years old that was deposited uh, as sand in a beach environment. We'll work our way past all the prickly cacti. And even now, as I'm looking at the rocks on the ground, see if I can find you a good spot here to show you this. I'm not seeing any of the black, shiny, crystalline rocks we saw just a few minutes behind us there on the other side of this wash. We're seeing mainly these sedimentary rocks cropping out here. So here we've got a good outcrop, I think starting to pop out here. Now the rocks look a little bit more reddish in color. Um, see if we can find a good, there's a little bit of an outcrop here beneath this bush, but let's find, yeah, over here, this looks really good here. This looks like what we were looking for, uh, the winter here. This is a kind of reddish pink sandstone. Um, let's see if you can, let me zoom out a little bit, sorry there. You can see some of the grains, individual grains of quartz in here. We're even seeing some of the cross bedding. You can see some of the uh, angled lines coming across this. Uh, Tapete sandstone is very well known for the cross bedding in it. Here's some more of these ledgy outcrops here. You can see it's all dipping, in this case, to the left, a little bit away from us, which would be probably the northeast. So I think we found it somewhere between those outcrops I showed you at the beginning and these outcrops of Tapete sandstone lies the great unconformity. More or less running, I think, up through the wash. So it probably likely parallels the wash there. So there's some of the dark outcrops just on the other side. And I think you can almost make it out right up through this gully here, perhaps. This looks like more of the Tapete sandstone here at that highest point and then the dark outcrop just to the left over here looks like that's some of the the basement rocks there so fantastic i don't know it, for me the, the great unconformity just because it's such a significant geologic feature is always something that gets me excited so knowing it was in this area uh, i was pretty psyched to come out here and see if i could actually look at it um, see the rocks on either side of it and just you know observe it one more in one more location fantastic stuff
Well, hey, thanks again for joining me on this fun little adventure to see the Great Unconformity. Again, one of the, the premier geologic features in all of Western North America. It's so important because it represents such a vast period of time. It's so hard for us as humans to comprehend 1.3 billion years of time. And you can, in some places like the Grand Canyon, actually put your finger on that contact that represents that period of time. Really cool to see the two units here that were juxtaposed next to each other, the Cambrian beach sandstones overlaying these deeply formed uh, lower level deep crystalline rocks, these metamorphic and igneous rocks. Just fantastic stuff. Hope you enjoyed me on this fun little adventure to the Beaver Dam Mountains. Thank you so much for your support of the channel and we'll see you next time team. Take care.